Send is much like its opposite, water. You can see it. You can feel it. But you can't always control it. Fighting it takes both grit and flexibility. In the Kubuchi Desert, China is trying something bold, planting solar panels to heal the land. In many places, solar panels are about cutting carbon. But here in Inner Mongolia, it's also about cutting wind, keeping the soil, and giving the land a second chance to breathe again. Inside the solar fields, life is quietly returning. The poles stabilize the shifting sand, and the panels above cast shade, slowing evaporation, giving scarce moisture a better chance to linger. This is part of a 400-kilometer-long, 5-kilometer-wide ecological barrier built to shield the Yellow River from the encroaching Kubuchi Desert. The goal is to achieve an installed capacity of 100 million kilowatts, will also help treat 200,000 hectares of sandy land. In the middle of the desert and under this solar panel, you can feel it, this quiet and stubborn kind of hope. But desert control comes with trade-offs. The risk? Ecology for ecology's sake. That's where the electricity helps. It's not just green power, it's also economic fuel. Mm. Dalla Banner generated 3.36 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. That's the carbon equivalent of cutting 2.77 million tons of emissions. Tackling desertification isn't just about sunlight and technology, it's also about water. Underground water is precious, which makes it tricky to use for large-scale restoration. So the question is, how do you heal the desert without draining the land dry? China's fight against desertification spans decades. On the road to the Muwa's desert, traces of early efforts remain. Checkerboard windbreaks and green patches sprouted from earlier area seeding. These efforts have earned China one of the UN's highest environmental honors in 2017. The checkerboard method has since spread to African countries battling severe desertification. But the exploration continues in China. Instead of irrigation, researchers are placing a new biodegradable hydrogel into the soil. It's designed to retain moisture, allowing plants to survive on rainfall alone. So this is a camel in a gel form. The gel is made by simply mixing powder with water and letting it expand. No groundwater is needed a key advantage in regions where every drop counts. Our innovation handles greening and sand control in one go, way more efficient than old-school methods. It cuts labor, time, and costs significantly. Each planted seedling may seem insignificant against the vast desert, but researchers are testing more than just survival, they're testing sustainability. Some species endure the climate, but damage the environment. Take something like tumbleweed, for example. It's a U.S. import. Once it dies, it creates barriers. If planted near cities, it can worsen dust storms and disrupt daily life. Other species offer more promise. Shrubs like white pea shrub adapt well and double as livestock feed. A newly introduced reed, space bred arundel, may help restore soil and be used for biofuel. The hydrogel method is now being scaled up. Demand is rising, especially from desert-prone countries in the Middle East. Mm. We've signed a $300 million deal with the United Arab Emirates and are partnering with the Royal Nature Reserve in Saudi Arabia. Our product is non-toxic and biodegradable. We believe it can accelerate restoration and become part of the global solution. The road out of the desert is hard, 
just like the path to stop it from spreading. But for China, the will to restore the land runs deep. Across China's arid and degraded land, green is returning, step by step, year after year. The work continues, fueled by the determination to find solutions that can withstand time and climate. Lu Siri, CGTN, Erdos, Inner Mongolia.